Google has recently wowed many with an intriguing announcement. Their new quantum chip might just be accessing parallel universes to deliver its impressive results. They introduced the Willow chip, which, at least on one specific benchmark, is said to outperform every supercomputer in existence. Today we're going to talk about what quantum computing is, what are these multiverses that we're accessing, and what does it mean for us. And since Google has already been decreed to be a monopoly by the Justice Department, could Google face charges in every single sub-universe that they're operating in? Would each of those be a separate count? I'm Evan Goldstein. I'm a licensed professional engineer and a data scientist. I'm creating the AI Capitalist channel to talk to the leaders and thinkers like you about how we navigate this new world of intelligent machines. So Harman Niven, co-founder of Google Quantum AI, shared that Will's performance is truly remarkable. It completed a calculation in under five minutes that would have taken one of the fastest supercomputers in the world a mind-blowing 10 to the 25th years, or 10 septillion years. This staggering figure far exceeds anything that we know in physics and is significantly longer than the age of the universe itself. And these results lend support to the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, initially proposed by Hugh Everett and later refined by David Deutsch, who believed that parallel universes help explain quantum phenomena. When physicists first discovered quantum mechanics in the 1920s, they were baffled by how particles behaved at the atomic level. Two brilliant physicists, Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg, proposed what became known as the Copenhagen interpretation to make sense of these bizarre observations. Think of it this way. Imagine you have a coin that's spinning on a table. While it's spinning, we can think of it as being both heads and tails at the same time. According to the Copenhagen interpretation, this is similar to how quantum particles behave exist in multiple states simultaneously until someone looks at them. The moment you stop the coin and look at it, it becomes either heads or tails. Similarly, when scientists measure a quantum particle, it chooses one definite state. Now this view stands in stark contrast to David Deutsch's later interpretation, which suggests something even stranger. Using our coin analogy, Deutsch would say that when you look at the coin, both outcomes actually happen, but in different universes. In one universe, you see heads, in the other universe, you see tails, and both universes are equally real. The Copenhagen interpretation dominated quantum physics for decades because it provided a practical way to work with quantum mechanics without getting lost in the philosophical questions about reality. It essentially tells scientists, don't worry what's happening behind the scenes, just focus on what we can measure and observe, which is critical for any sort of empirical scientific inquiry. However, this pragmatic approach leaves some deep questions unanswered, like what exactly causes a particle to choose one state over another when measured, or whether consciousness plays a role in this process. And these lingering mysteries have led some physicists like Deutsch to seek alternative explanations. Now, David Deutsch introduced his fascinating multiverse hypothesis in his 1997 book, The Fabric of Reality. He proposed the idea that the incredible calculations performed by quantum computers might actually occur across multiple universes simultaneously. Now, this intriguing concept suggests that an expansive multiverse could exist filled with potentially infinite universes that each follow their own unique set of physical laws and constants. In a broader sense, this collection of parallel universes encompasses everything that we know about existence, covering all of space, time, matter, energy, and fundamental laws governing them. So while Google hints that its ultra-fast chip may be processing computations across these universes, it raises eyebrows and invites a dose of skepticism. The future of Google's breakthrough and its importance is still up for discussion. However, the company is excited about what's next and it's committed to further developing Willow to make it genuinely helpful down the road. Google is already being threatened with being broken up due to monopolistic practices. The overall practice of breaking up monopolies seems like a bit of a contradiction. If you look at the incentive structure, companies are always incentivized to capture market share to make the best product possible at the lowest price point. This results in a net value for the average customer. But as companies do business legally and produce better and better products, they gather up more and more of the market share. And they might eventually make it to 100% market share and dominate the entire economy, at least in their niche. Which is bad for consumers because now they have no motivation to... Uh, to produce better products at lower price points. They just need want to extract as much profit as they can. But the company isn't actually doing anything unethical or illegal in growing. They're just following the incentive structure until they fully succeed, at which point they are breaking the law. It's like running a race where the winner gets thrown off a cliff because these companies have to be broken up. But that's just one of those areas where capitalism doesn't provide a perfect answer. 
I should point out here that Marxism and planned economies are essentially a state monopoly on everything, where your local tyrant has full control over the entire market, and all products are too expensive and junk. So regulation in this case might be said to be a way of avoiding socialism. Now, the multiverse problem itself brings up some amusing questions. So, for example, right now in our universe, a district court judge has ruled that Google holds an illegal monopoly over the internet search market. But the Department of Justice is looking at breaking up Google. In our universe, Google probably won't be broken up in the end. But let's say that the Department of Justice in another sub-universe within the multiverse does decree that Google needs to be broken up. Would that ruling apply throughout the multiverse? Could the judgment be patriated from another sub-universe into ours? Fortunately, there doesn't seem to be any way, even theoretically, to communicate between sub-universes within the multiverse. So there's no way for the paperwork to make it through. But it's important to note that the specific calculation that Willow performed is being claimed to not be particularly groundbreaking or practical. Esteemed physicist and science communicator Sabine Hassenfelder even chimed in on social media, remarking that the incident presented a calculation of little value in light of Google's claim. So she thinks it's no big deal. I disagree. Firstly, we're mostly interested in the fact that it's even able to perform the calculations based on quantum states instead of hard-wired chips and transistors at all. The Wright brothers weren't trying to make a B-52 bomber and when they flew the first time, they were just trying to prove they could fly. And this technology can open doors to exciting possibilities, particularly in realms like cryptography and cybersecurity, where the true potential of quantum computing may shine. A quantum random number generator, a QRNG, fundamentally differs from a classical random number generator by leveraging actual quantum mechanical phenomena to produce truly random numbers. While classical systems rely on deterministic algorithms that can be potentially predicted, QRNGs harness inherently unpredictable quantum phenomena, such as photon behavior and quantum superposition, to ensure genuine randomness. The practical applications of quantum random number generation extend far beyond theoretical interest. In cryptography, these random numbers are essential for generating unbreakable encryption keys. The financial sector relies on high-quality random numbers for complex modeling and simulation, and scientific research requires unpredictable random numbers for various experimental design. When quantum computers like Google's Willow generate random distributions through quantum sampling, they produce high-entropy outputs that are provably random. This process involves creating specific quantum circuits measuring qubit states and then converting these measurements into random bit strings. Traditional random number generators, which use deterministic algorithms, can theoretically be predicted. So rather than dismissing quantum random number generation as impractical, we should recognize it as a valuable and concrete application of quantum technology, one that addresses real-world needs in cybersecurity, scientific research, and financial modeling. These quantum computing states have profound implications for artificial intelligence. Machine learning algorithms often require massive computational power, and the ability to process complex probabilistic data. Quantum computers like Willow could revolutionize AI by enabling more sophisticated neural networks that can simultaneously explore multiple computational paths. Unlike classical AI systems constrained by binary logic, quantum AI could potentially simulate more nuanced, nonlinear decision-making processes that more closely mimic human cognitive flexibility. And I'm even working on an episode right now where I'm going to go into a lot more detail on quantum intelligence and how there is a sneaking suspicion now that quantum effects are actually happening in our brains as we think. We're not just biochemical. So the focus on this specific challenge is being made because it's been shown with a few technical details to consider that solving, solving it on a traditional computer is pretty tough, mainly due to the extensive use of entanglement. Now this lets them make some eye-catching statements like saying it would take a septillion years on a conventional computer. Willow has a 100 qubit chip, which is fascinating in and of itself. Unlike regular computers that rely on a binary system and zeros and ones, quantum computers use qubits that can be in a state of on, off, or both, thanks to the intriguing concept of quantum entanglement. This phenomenon allows particles to affect one another's states even when they're far apart. Einstein used to call this spooky action at a distance. In fact, back in 2019, Google performed the same calculation using a 50 qubit chip, and it made quite a splash claims of achieving quantum supremacy at that time. This is the point where quantum computers can tackle tasks that classical computers just can't, regardless of how useful those tasks are. And this idea is especially relevant to the recent announcement. While it's truly impressive from a scientific perspective, it doesn't really change much in our lives just yet. Estimates suggest that we're going to need about 1 million qubits for practically useful applications, and we still have a way to go before reaching that magic number. 
Such bold declarations could eventually become less significant if someone discovers a clever way to solve the same problem using conventional computers. Now, Google's massive investment in quantum computing research represents a strategic capitalist bet on the future technological dominance of this type of technology. By pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into developing quantum technologies, the company is positioning itself to potentially monopolize the transformative computational approach. This isn't just scientific research, it's a high stakes economic competition where the first company to achieve practical quantum computing could gain unprecedented market advantages, potentially disrupting entire industries from cybersecurity to financial modeling and creating a massive new revenue stream. So one of the interesting things that's been found about quantum mechanics is that it determines that our universe is governed by these universal constants. And these constants determine how tightly bound, for example, an electron is to its nucleus in an atom or how strong or weak gravitation is. Many of these, we don't have a theoretical basis for why the numbers are what they are. And it's been found that if these numbers were somewhat off to the left or right, like by 2% in some cases, the entire universe would fly apart. Electrons would not be able to bond to the nucleus of the atom, for example, and nothing that we see around us would exist. So it leads to the question of a special creation. What is creating the universe? How is the universe created in such a way that we're able to live in it? One of the potential answers to this is the anthropic principle, that we believe that perhaps all these multiverses are created, and in each multiverse, there's a slightly different arrangement of universal physical constants. And so in most of these other universes, no, life couldn't exist, but in ours it could. And then now intelligent life exists. And that intelligent life looks at the universe and ponders, what's so special about why were we created special in our special universe? When in fact, it's still just a random chip. Now Google's crossing into the multiverse, if that's what's happened, represents just a further spread of their monopoly, right? Now they're the first to market in other universes, but on the plus side, it's physics. So if they can do it, someone else can do it. So they're not gonna hold the monopoly forever. So this news really does give us hope that we can build large and practical quantum computers in the near future. And if it's true, Google is the first to the multiverse. And if you feel you're getting value from this episode, I would appreciate it if you would push the like button. Pushing like lets me know that I'm making content you wanna see, spreads that content to others, and is gonna break us out of small channel hell. Together we can build this channel into something real. Don't stop now, I have dozens more videos. This video is part of a playlist, which I'll post for you here so that you can go through and watch other videos that are similar, or you can watch our newest videos and we have lots of other playlists, so 